Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to split screen your blog post template with Divi's theme builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So right now I'm in my WordPress admin dashboard. So the first thing we need to do is to come all the way down here to Divi and then click on theme builder. So this is where we're going to uh, set up our template. Now over here, I know I've been messing about with another example in the previous tutorial. So I'm going to delete that. And this is how this should look if you don't have any templates on your website. All right. So the next thing you want to do now is to create a new template by clicking here on the plus button. So the template needs to apply to all the uh, blog posts. So you need to make sure you select all posts and then create a template. Okay. Next, you want to uh, go in and customize this template. So to do that, you want to come over here to add custom body. So this now is going to take us into the Divi Builder. Next, I'm going to click on build custom body. So here we're going to build everything from scratch and we're just going to close this for now. The next thing we need to do now is to go into the section settings, click on design and spacing. So here we need to remove the padding both from the top and the bottom. So now I've just applied zero padding both to the top and the bottom. Next, we're going to add a brand new row. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button and the row structure that we need is two columns. Now let's go into the row settings by clicking here on this gear icon, design. And the first thing we need to do here is to go into the sizing. And here we need to activate the use custom gutter width. Now the gutter width is the space between the columns. So we want to make sure there's no spaces between the columns. Next, we want to make sure that equalize column heights is activated. And then for the width here, we need to set this to 100% and the maximum width also needs to be 100%. Right, so we want this to fill the whole screen. So what we need to do as well is to set our minimum height and maximum height. So for our minimum height, we're going to set this to 100 VH. And for our maximum height, we're going to set this to 100 VH as well. Next, we're going to uh, come over here to spacing and we need to do the same as we did with the um, sections. And that is to remove any padding. So I'm going to apply this to the top and the bottom as well. So basically, we're not going to have any spaces on our rows as well. The next step now is to come over here to advanced. And then we're going to click on visibility. And here we need to set our horizontal overflow to hidden. And we're also going to do the same to the vertical. All right. So now that we have this all set, we're going to come back over here to our content and we need to now go into our column one settings. And uh, here we need to go into our background settings. So I'm going to click here on background and then click on the gradient tab. Click on this plus button. So now it's time to add our colors. So for our first color here, we are going to add transparency. So I'm just going to drag the slider down and add my values between the brackets. Okay, just like that. Now, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below, which has all these settings. All right. So next, I'm going to add my second color. So I'm going to click here and uh, I'm going to click inside here. So this time here, this color does not have any transparency. So I'm just going to go in and add it like that. So now that I've added my color, the next step now is to make sure we place the gradient above the background image. So let's go ahead and do that. So now it's time to add our background image. So we're going to come over here to uh, this tab and we want this to be a featured image, which means it's going to be pulled dynamically onto our blog post. So I'm going to click here on use dynamic content and then select featured image. So at the moment here, we're going to have a blank image, but that's okay because once we set up our post, it is going to show everything. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and let's go into column two settings. So here in column two, since we removed all our padding, it means everything is going to be flash on all the sides. And that doesn't look good because we need to have some breathing space on our content. So what we're going to do now is to go into design. And remember, we're working on column two. So now we're going to go into spacing and into the padding. Now we just need to add a padding of 8% pretty much all around. So this means that we're going to have some white space around our content. 
which makes it look very, very nice. All right, so now that we've added this, the next step now is to go to our settings for our overflow. So I'm gonna come over here to advanced visibility, and then I need to go to vertical overflow. And here, this time, we are going to set this to scroll, and then we're going to save. Save one more time. So we're almost there. The next step now is to add our post title module to column one. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and search for post title. And here it is, I'm gonna select it. So there's a few things that we need to do here. And that is to uh, make sure we remove all the items we don't need. So as you can see here, we have this featured image. So definitely we don't need to show the featured image. So I'm gonna remove that. And now let's move on to the design tab. So what we're going to do now is to go and uh, set all our fonts. So we're going to start here with the main title. And as you can see, this is heading one. And now let's add our fonts. And here we're going to use Work Sans. And here it is. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Next, we're going to set our font weight. And this is going to be bold. And the text color is going to be white. Now let's add our sizes. So on the desktop, it's going to be 60 pixels. And we might as well go in and set our sizes for the other screens. So I'm going to click here on this little icon. And for the tablet, we're going to set this to 45. And then for the phone, it's going to be 35. I know we can't see this right now, but um, once we've set everything up, we are going to be able to see all this. Right, so the next thing is to set our letter spacing. And this is going to be minus 1. And our line height is going to be 1.2. Now let's go on and set our meta settings. So I'm going to come over here and uh, here we need to also choose work sans. The style is going to be uppercase and I also need to add the text color here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right. So let's go on to letter spacing. So I'm going to come over here and set this to two pixels. And the next step now is to go into sizing. So I'm going to scroll down here, click on sizing. And here we're going to set our width at 81%. And next we need to go into spacing. And here we're going to add a top padding of 8%. And that needs to be the same for the bottom as well. And let's also add the left and right, which is going to be 7%. Activate my chain. So that is now looking good. And I know we can't see it right now. So what I'm going to do is to add it into position. But we're going to do that last. So the next step now is to go into position. And I'm going to come over here to advanced position. So here we need to um, just make sure we choose absolute as our positioning here. And it needs to be set to the bottom center. And our vertical offset is going to be 10%. And let's go ahead and save. All right, so now we need to drag this over here to this area. So we're going to drag it over here because this is where it's going to be. Right, so pretty much this is what our title text is going to look like. And it's always going to be at the bottom here, as you can see. Now let's add our post content to module two, which is over here to the right. So I'm going to click here and search for post content. I'm going to select it. So what we need to do here is to click on this gear icon to go into our settings. So the most important thing right away is to just go in and change our headings. So I'm going to uh, just hover over here and do it that way. So we need to do this one by one for all the headings. So I'm gonna click here on this paintbrush tool and this is gonna take us straight to heading one. So let's change our font here to work sans and we're gonna set this to semi bold. Now let's move on to the next one, which is heading two. And here again, we're going to set this to work sans semi bold. And the cut, the size here is going to be 40. Moving on to heading three. Change this to work sans semi bold. And this time this needs to be set to 30. Moving on to uh, heading four. So as you can see, this is pretty much the same thing that you need to do for all these. Uh, just make sure that uh, you've set everything to work sans. So again, here I want to add to the size. So normally, you know, heading five and six is not really used, but if you want, you can go ahead and add uh, those. 
So I just want to go back to my heading one here and uh, I'm going to set this to, let's say 60 or maybe bring it down a bit. Okay, so we're going to go with 48 for our main heading size. Right, so the next step now is to add a CSS class. So I'm going to come over here to Advanced, CSS ID and Classes. And then on the uh, CSS class, it's going to be Blog Post Content. Okay, so now that I have my class there, we're now going to add the CSS code, which is going to add some space between the paragraphs and headings. All right, so what we're going to do now is to add a code module. So let's save this first. And then we want to add a code module, which I'm going to do by clicking here on this plus button and selecting code. And I'm going to paste the code in here. So just by doing that, you can see here, I know it was, uh, it happened really fast, but uh, it has added some space in there, which makes this look really, really nice. So with that set, I'm going to save. And the next part now is to add our comments to our column two. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And here's the comments module. I'm going to select it. So now it's time to stylize this. So I'm going to come over here to the design tab, click on fields, because here we need to add the fields background color. We're going to set this to white and our text color is going to be black. And then we also need to add our fields top padding. So we're going to come all the way down here. So our top padding here is going to be 30 pixels. And we might as well add the same for our bottom and left and right. There we go. And our font here as well is going to be WorkSense. You want to make sure you are consistent with all your fonts as you add them onto your site. Now let's go to our fields font style. So we're going to set this to all caps and the size is going to be 15 because we want to make sure it's not too big. And then the letter spacing is going to be three and the field rounded corners is going to be 10. Now make sure this chain is activated because that's what allows uh, those rounded corners to be applied to all the sides. Now let's head over here to our field box shadow. So here we're going to go with uh, the first style here because we really want everything to show because remember we made it black. I mean, we made it white so it couldn't be seen. So with that selected, what we're going to do now is to start by adjusting our blur strength. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here until I see the blur strength. And here it is. We're going to set this to 30 pixels. And now we need to add our box shadow color. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit, click here on this eyedropper tool, and we're going to paste the value between the brackets. And like I said before, I'm going to add link to the post in the show notes below where you can uh, find all these settings. All right, so now that I have this all set, we can also go in and make further customizations to all this. So the comments, we can come over here and just change the font here to Work Sans, like that. Uh, you can also do the same with the meta font. And notice how easy it is because I'm just clicking here on the on this paintbrush tool and I can go in easily and choose my font. So I think I have to do this here as well. Okay, great. So all that now has been selected. So now we need to work on the button because as you can see, this button here is uh, not looking good. So let's go here, click on this little icon and we're going to look for the button and here it is. Right, so for the button to be customized, we need to make sure that we activate use custom styles. So I'm going to click on that and now use custom styles is activated. So let's start by adding our size here and this is going to be 16 pixels. And for our button text color, it's going to be white. And then for our button background color, it's going to be black. So I'm going to come over here, click on this plus button here and add my color. So now you can see my button is visible. Let's go on now to our button border radius. So we're going to scroll down here and we are going to set this to 100 pixels and that's going to make it have rounded corners. Now, while we're here, we might as well get rid of the border width as well. All right. So moving on for the letter spacing, we're going to set this to two and we also need to choose our font, which is work sans. I'm going to select that and let's make it, uh, let's make it uppercase as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. So now you can see our button here looks much, much better. Now, if you want, you can also add a button icon that goes with that. But to be honest, I'm really happy with that little um, bracket that shows up when I hover over it. 
Now let's go to the button top padding. So here we need to just give this button a bit of breathing space. So we are going to set this to 2%. So this needs to be applied both to the top and the bottom. And then for the left and right, we are going to set this to 5%. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then next, we're going to come over here to spacing and just give this button here a bit of uh, space on the top. So we're going to set this to 15%. Right, so while we're here, we're going to uh, go into the advanced tab, custom CSS, and what we need here is the comments body CSS. So we're going to come over here, and here's the comments body, and this is the CSS code we need to add, which is margin top 50 pixels. So pretty much we're done here with our design. I'm going to save this. Now we also, and this is very important, you want to make sure you click here on expand settings and save this again, and then now you can close out of this. Right, so let's save changes one more time here. All right, so now it's time to have a look at our split screen design for our blog post. So I'm gonna come over here and refresh. Now, of course, you wanna have a blog post in your website already for this to show. So as you can see here, this is looking really nice. I've got a large image here, which has my title. And then over here, I can scroll through my uh, contents on my page so there you have it thank you all for watching if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms by doing so you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials until next time thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care